Hello you wonderful people. I'm Laura and welcome to my YouTube channel, Sewing Up Style. In today's video, I'm going to share with you some of the things that I have been picking up over the last couple of months. I have been trying to put a moratorium on my purchasing of patterns and fabric and, you know, things in general. And um, I've done okay, but I've been able to go shopping um, at Joann's and um, I've picked up some things from Walmart in the fabric bundles. And so I thought um, today I've been stressed, I've been driving a lot, I've been, um, do you hear the cat? She's clawing things. I've been, um, just having a lot of stress and I decided maybe today instead of trying to hurry and get something done I just take a little breather and you guys can take a breather with me and kind of check out some things see if there's anything that you would be interested in getting and um, then the second part of this video is a tutorial on the collar of McCall's 8459 I got a comment yesterday from Caleb Fairchild I believe was the last name and um, they had some difficulties with the collar like I did and as they're new they were one new to sewing or relatively new to sewing they were wondering if I might be able to give them any tips or tricks and so I figured it'd just be easier to put a little tutorial in at the end so I will put a chapter in I'll put a chapter in so if you want to just go to the tutorial you can do that or if you want to watch just the you know the sewing haul you can do that and then just you know bounce at the point of the tutorial so yeah I guess let's start with some should we do the fabrics or the patterns first I can't decide. Let's do the patterns are right here. Let's just do them. By the way, did you guys see I finally got my new table put together. Actually, my husband got my new table put together. And watch, it raises, it lowers. All right, the first one I got was at the Simplicity Cell a couple of weeks ago. Um, I've bought these patterns in Wyoming. I've bought them in Omaha. I've bought them in Lincoln and I've bought them in Colorado. So it's just kind of been a conglomeration. That's how many different places I've been over the last couple of months. Anyway, okay, Simplicity 1236. I wanted the covers. My, my food covers, like the lids for my glassware, um, you know, glass containers, they all cracked. So the plastic lid, is really not that helpful because it um, it just lets the air in it lets it dry or it spills out or whatever so I was thinking with these they have um, they say to have a laminate for them but I am thinking I will treat them with beeswax and um, it will be more friendly to nature and um, I can have some covers for my my now lidless glassware so that is why I bought it I also though I really like these I don't go anywhere there is no reason for me to make these but these would make wonderful presents <clears throat> and I could use up a lot of the cotton so it was just a win-win all around for um, this pattern so again that was simplicity 1236 if you ever wanted to pick that up then I got a couple of shirt patterns for my husband and my kids sooner or later not much longer my kids are going to be out of the house and then i don't know i'll make stuff for my husband i guess um bird is 6602 it's kind of unisex um it's just all of them i was looking for a high necked t-shirt collar um a high necked let's see a t-shirt with a high necked collar because my husband really does not like it when they're like wider than the ones that I've been making him but I thought it was cute and there was like lots of options you know hoodie um, with the longer sleeves um, with the same color longer sleeves contrasting not contrasting with the, with a cute little pocket and then I got Berda 6349 
when they were on sale for this shirt right here uh, with just the collar stand it's really um, it's kind of oversized it's got the straight bottom but I have that um, flannel that I have had now for a year and a half that I was going to make my husband a um, like 18th century men's shirt and is just so voluminous and um, he wants an oversized shirt but he doesn't want one that oversized I don't think so I thought this would be maybe a good alternative to that I got myself um, Simplicity 9647 I got for these pants and the reason why I got this because I was not going to get this pants pattern but they the dock is hot hot the dock is hot Haute Couture, yes, the dock is Haute. Um, she made these pants and they looked wonderful. So, um, and she just sang their praises and I thought, well, if I'm gonna make pants, that sounds like the kind of pants that I need. The relatively easy to make and I really do like the cuffs here. And so I just happened to have a lot of linen that would actually look really cute um, in this style of of trouser and then I got um, Simplicity 9957 I like these so much with the different colors of denim or twill or whatever I just I really like the different kind of seam lines and then of course if you just want to have the cropped all one you know without the different seam lines no nope, those have different seam lines they're just not fuzzed can you see they do have the seam lines then I got some shirt patterns. Um, Butterick 69.96. It looks comfy. I like the the sleeves. <clears throat> it's just nice, kind of nice all around. And then uh, the Berta 60.67. I like this with the longer t-shirt sleeves. I don't really get into that on the sides. The kind of ruching or whatever that's called, where uh, gathering but I really do like this one so I really like the way this is um, cropped in the front and really really long in the back you can see oh my gosh it comes with the pants I didn't know that I'm very excited now because those are some nice pants too so I think it's all woven charmeuse cotton lawn crepe de chine double georgette silk types and then the pants are chambray cotton blends gabardine gabardine yeah i said it right light wool blends linen blends stretch wovens and twill i have some stretch wovens that would be perfect for that so anywho um, on the back you can see how the back drapes really nicely and then i loved this sweater and i have some fabric that would be absolutely perfect for it and I've kind of, I just don't have time to make everything I want to make. So this is for stretch knits only, sweater net, boucle, ponte, jersey, stretch velvet. Oh, that would be nice in a ponte, wouldn't it? That would be kind of, um, that would just be nice. It would be like a shirt instead of a sweater. But So I don't know if having these, um, you know, being as broad-shouldered as I am, I'm not really sure about having that cape type effect on my shoulders if that would just make me look bulky or if it would kind of hide and by making that V um, that V that's here if it would just make it more like a wrap where it would be more flattering I don't know so I am interested to find out so this fall this will need to be made and then the last of the patterns I have been making you know if you've been around for very long on my channel sorry my hair looks terrible um, I have been um, sewing a lot of midi dresses which I like midi and I think that it's very it makes me look taller because um, I'm kind of short but I they take a lot of um, fabric and I've been wanting to just get some easy to make dresses for work or to throw on when I go on the weekends or those kinds of things. Midi dresses, unless they're like beachwear, that kind of thing, 
that was the cat. Um, you know, they just look dressy because they're longer dresses. And I sometimes when I'm wearing them, I feel out of place. But if I had just a real simple pull on type of dress to wear when I go to the store or um, those kinds of things, I, I, I think that might be the way to go for my casual stuff. Um, and then, you know, I can have those midi dresses for work or um, special occasions. I always feel like I'm <laughs> doing something really amazing when I pull out a dress and I'm like, this really shouldn't be this way because I really like to wear dresses, but I don't want to feel like I'm overdressed. And you know, I do live in rural Nebraska, so it's easy to be overdressed. <laughs> Okay, Simplicity 9262. I really like this dress because it's simple and, um, you know, it's, it's clean. It looks, I mean, it's a pullover dress. It just kind of ticked all those boxes. And so I decided I would grab it and give it a try. I feel like somebody has made this dress before, but I'm not sure who. So um, if you have made this dress before, let me know in the comments and let me know what your experience was. If you felt like it was a a good a good one was it a good experience <laughs> doesn't look like it can be too hard let's see next bird of style 6129 um i like it as both the shirt and as the dress i might have a shirt like this in a butterick pattern i i have so many patterns but on the back let me just show you um i like this little gathering or pleating right here. I think that is super cute. I I like both. And then, you know, the dress is a little bit above the knee. I would make it go below the knee so that I could wear it to work. But um, it's just a nice, simple, loose, comfortable dress. Butterick 6480 I just got. And I uh, these lines are so pretty. Let me show you on the back because it's easier to see. Um, they're just so unique. I absolutely love it. These dresses do not take much. Two and a fourth yards for, let's see, for C, it says two and a half yards. And that's for my size. And that's in a 45 inch fabric. Two and five eighths. Well, 16 is two and a half. 18 is two and five eighths. So, and that's for the long sleeved one. These ones are, um, you know, closer to two or two and an eighth, two and a fourth. And if you have a 60 inch fabric, like a chalet, often will come. Does not say chalet though. Linen, sateen, gabardine, cotton blends, wool blends. Anyway, I like all of these. I really like this with the V-neck though. I might make this for summer and then make this for, for winter. And since so color blocking is such a big thing right now um you could definitely color block you could use lace i have some woven like non-stretch lace that would be really pretty well we'll see what happens and then finally is budrick i think i have this one already i didn't think i had it i was 100 percent positive i didn't have it last weekend when i was in omaha but i started thinking about it and i think i do um, it is Budrick 69.45. I think this was their spring release as well. But um, I'm always looking for a knit, um, knit anything really, because I have so many knits now. Aren't these pleats pretty? I just think those are so pretty. This is going to be a hugely long video. Um, I got some interfacing because at Joann's last weekend, the interfacing was half off. And then fabric wise, I have a new um, Target outfit for I saw it, I liked it, I made it. So I needed to get some linen rayon blend, <clears throat> rayon linen blend. And I got this because it's so pretty. It's so purpley and the, the linen I was going to you know, match it with the, that I already have, it's perfect for it. Guess what though? I didn't get enough. And so, um, so I got this, where did I get this? I can't remember, at a Joann's, but um, instead of going back to that Joann's, it was in Omaha, 
I went to the other one in Omaha <clears throat> and I just got a different color. So um, it was like $6, $7 a yard and I got two and two and a half yards so that I can make um, what I need to make out of it. I don't want to tell you because that will ruin the surprise. But <clears throat> so those are the two linen rayon blends that I got. I don't know for sure what I want to do with this, but um, it might become a skirt, it might become one of those dresses. Actually, that would be a really nice dress. So there's two yards of this. Anyway, so stay tuned. This will be coming up as well. Um, then at that same Joann's, there was this very cute, it's a pop, I think it's a pop fabric, super soft. I mean like so soft and I cannot do yellow. Yellow is not my color at all. Anyway, it was on sale for like $3 a yard, $3.45, something like that. So I got, I got it. Um, my husband didn't want it. I don't think that my youngest son wanted it so my oldest son might want it and if he doesn't want it I'm gonna make like lounge clothes for me out of it because I do want it I just can't I mean like you can see it just makes me look super yellow and not very healthy so but it's such a happy fabric <laughs> so I bought it and I figured I'll do something with it and then the two fabrics that I got out of Walmart are um, this striped cotton. It's about as soft as the pop fabric, quite honestly. And it is, you can't see through it. It's a nice thick fabric. So I was like, well, yeah, I'm buying that. It was two yards for $4. And then the other one is two yards for $4. And it's just a cute green stripe. I figure one of my children will like it. And it again is pretty, um, you know, pretty thick. You can't really see through it at all. So it's two really nice knits. They feel like they're a, like a cotton blend. So I am thrilled with that purchase as well. So now this is where we will depart if you are not interested in the tutorial on the um, collar for McCall's 84.59. If you are, keep watching because I'm going to put that in right now. And I will see you next week if you leave now. I will see you <laughs> hopefully next week when we do our Discovering Denim. But more on that at the end of the um, video and otherwise you have a good time and I will see you at the end of the tutorial. All right, so on the collar of McCall's 84.59, I, I made view C, um, but they're all similar with the collar construction. Um, you have three pieces to the collar to make the little, like the big collar, oh, sorry, I can't see, the big collar, well, big collar and then the little collar underneath. So the little collar underneath is part of this um, piece that it attaches to the bodice. It's the contrast piece to the bodice and then it that makes the full bodice and then underneath you have the actual collar piece which is McCall's six and collar a b and c all of them you cut two for uh, any of the shirt types and then you cut an interfacing and then the what makes finishes making up the collar so that it has the facing and you when you turn it it doesn't show the back side of your fabric is the facing piece. It attaches to the contrasting piece and that's what makes up the little collar. Oop, sorry, I tripped over my chair. That's what makes up the little collar um, underneath. So when you start the shirt, you are, um, first you're attaching the contrasting band to the shirt itself. And this is what makes the little peak of the collar. I just remembered the word peak. I'm so proud of myself. I've been videoing this like four times and <laughs> I just finally remembered the word peak. Anyway, then you stay stitch um, 
you know, you've stay stitched the front, but then you stay stitched the back, and then you sew it together at the um, shoulder seams. Stitch front to back at shoulder seams. Okay, so then over here, when you get to this point, you have this cut out with two, two, two times, you've got two pieces, and then you've got one of them with the interfacing attached, either sewn in or ironed on. And so um, this piece right here, they're talking about one side, not both sides. You're not sewing anything together at this point. You are solely working on the collar piece that has the interfacing attached. So what they want you to do is first of all, sew 5 eighths of an inch all the way along the notched edge. So here's our notches. And so you know that you need to sew this top piece 5 eighths of an inch. Then after you've sewn 5 eighths of an inch, you're clipping to these small dots. So I made a 40, so I would have clipped to this dot right here. So you're clipping there and you're clipping there. So that leaves this piece, um, you know, free. And what they want you to do is turn it to the interfacing side and then iron it down so that you can make a kind of a lip. And then you're supposed to trim it to a quarter of an inch afterwards. So I just, just so you know, I usually if I trim it to a quarter of an inch, I then have nothing to work with. So I sometimes wait until after it's attached and then I go back and I trim it, or maybe I just don't trim it quite so short. But for some reason, every time I trim it to a quarter of an inch, I end up with trouble. Um, I just recommend you do whatever works for you. <laughs> okay, then with right sides together, stitch facing to collar. Leaving, I can't see, leaving notched edge open, trim seam. So th then what you're doing is you're taking the two collar pieces and you're putting right sides together and then you're stitching the facing, leaving this top, this whole top line um, open. You're just stitching down here, around here, and up here. This whole part is going to be open. Another thing that I messed up when I did it, when I did this one, I think I ended up ripping it open. <clears throat> okay, so then you understitch the facing, and I did not understitch the facing on mine because I had sewn it wrong but um, you understitch just as far as you can. And if you don't know what understitching is, here is something I learned just tonight. Hold on a minute. There are sewing tutorials. So it says up here, understitch. See machine stitches, how to understitch video. Or trim seam, see seams, how to trim, clip, and layer seams. So this is really nice. I have never noticed this on any patterns actually well the nomi patterns of course they have their full tutorials but this looks like it's like just short little videos so that you can see what exactly understitching is so um, you might want to check those out if you don't know what any of these glossary terms are okay back to the shirt you understitch the facing and then you turn the collar right side out press Clip neck edge of garment to stay stitching. So we had stay stitched, um, you know, the back, and we had stay stitched the front. So they're saying where there's the curves in the shirt um, to clip to the stay stitching to give it some ease so that you can fold it out a little flatter when you're attaching the collar. So clip neck edge to stay stitching on outside pin collar facing side to neck edge, matching large dots. So I am assuming since it shows the interfaced side on the right side of the garment that they are calling the interfaced side the facing. So you would take your piece like this that has the facing, the facing side, you know, because now this is together and it's right side out and you would attach it to the garment like this with the the non-interfaced piece out 
and the interface pieced in, matching the raw edges. Um, let's see, what does it say? Um, and then you match the large dots, which are these large dots. So there's large dots on the shirt too. You can see right there is where the, they would be, um, which would be around here on the shirt. And then um, placing small dots at shoulder seams based both collar and facing sections to front neck edge as far as small dot. So what that looks like is from here to here, you're basting the small edge. And then on the other side, you would be doing that as well. Then they say baste only the collar facing, the interfaced piece, to remaining neck edge between the small dots. So that piece that we left open up here and that's open right here, you are taking that and you're basting only that because you're going to leave this open so when you flop it over, you can um, turn it under and then slip stitch it. But I will get to that in a second. Okay, so then you are preparing your facing, which is this piece right here, which needs a press, doesn't it? Anyway, machine stitch half an inch from neck edge of front facing, these parts, to finish upper and long unnotched edge. So this side, um, as you can see, I just used my serger and surged it. Okay. Um, Stitch a quarter inch from the edge, turn under along stitching, and stitch or zigzag over the edge or overlock serge the edge. So they just want you to finish this edge somehow. Um, clip neck edge of facing to stitching. That's up here. So that has been stay stitched too. When did we do that? Um, not sure when we did that, but there's some stay stitching there. So they're saying in the curve, just clip that. Okay, this is where it gets interesting. And I got to get it closer because I'm trying to read through the phone again. With right sides together, pin facing to front and neck edge based. Clip neck edge through all thicknesses at small dot. Stitch front and neck edge as basted, being careful not to catch in free edge of collar. Trim seam. Okay. So what that would look like here in this piece, kind of lays funny because it's not on a shoulder. Okay, pardon me. On this piece, this is the facing. So right now in the directions, where we're at in the directions, we're up here. And so this hasn't been turned under yet. Um, this, this hasn't been sewn on yet. So what you've got is your collar piece right here attached to your garment piece and, um, and the front facing between the notched edge and this, this piece right here. This is just sewn on here and it's sewn on here and then this is open and this is not there. So when you are going to sew on the facing piece, you are, hold on a minute, I need to set the phone down. Okay, I had to turn the camera and turn the shirt inside out so you could see. So I just turned the facing inside out. So in the directions, it looks like this, where you've got the interface side on the garment and you've got these sewn on, on this side you can see, you've got these sewn on, and then this side, you can see my ugliness. Did you know you could do this? This is very handy, it saves on your interfacing anyway. So, <laughs> um, so what you're doing is you're attaching, with the buttons it's hard to see, but you're lining up the facing with on top of the collar and the garment. So you're just layering it all up and then you're going to just sew all the way over and then you're gonna sew all the way down the side of the facing. 
then that, uh oh, okay, that encases everything. Hopefully you can see that because I had to put the phone down so I can't really see it. Um, that encases all of this in the underneath the facing and you don't see all the grossness. And then, um, you know, and it attaches on. So then this part though would still be open after you get done sewing on the facing. So you have to turn that under and then um, whip stitch or sew it. And I looks like I sewed it to a point and then I did hand stitches to a point and then I sewed it to a point. So I'm not sure why I chose that. Um, it might have something to do with the way they talked about it, but yeah. And then the, the collar's on and you move on to this, the, the sleeves. You know, hopefully that helps. That's pretty much it. But this part from this whole section was very confusing because of the way it looked. Um, so I totally understand why there would be questions. The other tip or trick that I have to suggest is being sure to mark your dots um, as accurately as possible because it really did match up well. It was just the directions were confusing. So I'm wondering if that was um, your experience as well. So anyway, I'm, I'm going to stop talking about it now, but if you have any further questions, you know, um, tell me in the, the comment box and we'll see if we can figure out a, another way that might be more helpful than going through it this way. Okay, thanks. All right, well, thank you so much for joining me and I hope that the, the little video was helpful about, you know, doing that collar. Those kinds of collars are tricky and um, you know I've done them before and I did it this like two weeks ago and I still like when I was going through those directions it was like what are they trying to say and it just there's just not enough information to go with the pictures to make it actually understandable I think so <laughs> um, hopefully that helped um, how, what have you guys been up to the last couple of weeks I've been crazy doing all kinds of things and so I haven't been doing a lot of sewing. What have you guys been sewing up? I've enjoyed looking on Instagram, seeing different people's makes. And so, um, you know, let me know. If you're on Instagram, let me know what your Instagram is. And I'd love to go over and, you know, find you and then get to see what you make too. Anyway, um, have a good day, have a good weekend, and I will see you next week. We are going to be doing our Discovering Denim. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say what it is, but um, it's been fun to figure out what I wanna make and how I wanna make it. So come back next week and subscribe if you haven't. If you wanna see the video, you know, it seems like if you wanna see my videos, you need to be subscribed because I don't think I get shown to a whole lot of other people um <laughs> so definitely subscribe if you want to see my video otherwise you might not see me again <laughs> so have a great day and i will talk to you later bye